Hey guys, Zach from Pine State Overland. I'm out here with my 2015 Toyota Tacoma Ajax, and I'm gonna be doing a rig walk around video and showing you some of the things that I've done over the winter time to prepare for the 2021 season. I put a lot of work into this for everything from communications to recovery to lighting, and I'm excited to show you what I've been working on. So stay tuned. If you aren't subscribed already, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Let me know what you think about this video in the comment section below and give me a thumbs up if you thought it was a good one. So first and foremost, I wanna talk about what the truck is sitting on. It's sitting on Yokohama Geolander ATs, which is a 10 ply tire, American Racing Outlaw 2s, and Spider Tracks wheel spacers. I had to get the wheel spacers because the wheels are actually hitting the calipers in the front. So I didn't really have an option there, aside from going with an offset wheel, but these were the wheels that I had and the wheels that I really liked, so I decided to go with spacers and they've worked out really well ever since. Um, I've put about 20,000 miles on them so far and no complaints. I just check to make sure they're torqued regularly and, and they seem fine. I've got Bilstein 5100s all the, all the way around the truck. I'm running Old Man Emu 886 coils in the front and uh, the Icon Vehicle Dynamics add a leaf pack in the rear along with some airbags from Ride Right, uh, which I'll show you guys here in a minute. Give you guys a little bit of a closer look of the coilover setup in the front. And if you live in the New England area where they salt the roads really hard, um, you're gonna lose that shine on the 5100s. There's really, there's no way of getting around it. I got a lot of fluid film under the truck and a lot of um, wool wax, but they've lost their luster over the years. So here's just a little bit of a closer look. A little bit of a closer look on the, uh, the coils, the coilovers. They definitely lost their luster through the uh, main road salt and the fluid film, but they performed, they performed pretty well. So no complaints there. A little harder to see in the back here, but you can kind of see the airbags and the Icon Vehicle Dynamics leaf packs and the Bilstein 5100s in the back. So the fittings for the airbags are actually these. You unscrew them and it's just a regular uh, fitting, an air fitting, right? And the airbags are located on the back. You're not going to be able to really see them here, but they're mounted, they're mounted right here on top of the leaf springs. And the reason why I did that was because the truck was the leaf packs were really flat with all the weight and stuff that i've added onto the truck so i wanted to kind of boost them up a bit and the airbags have worked out amazing it's like driving a stock truck again so definitely recommend it if you're having issues with a lot of weight on your truck so i'm going to work from the front of the vehicle back first and foremost is the arb deluxe bumper this bumper i bought used from a gentleman down in west virginia went down there and picked it up and behind the bumper I have a Rough Country 9,500 pound winch with a Factor 55 fair lead and just a generic thimble, synthetic line. Now, since this winch was a wired winch, it didn't come with a wireless controller, I installed this come up wireless controller um, for the winch. So I have a remote that goes in the cab. This is powered all the time from the battery and it allows me to spool and unspool the winch line wirelessly, which is a really awesome feature. Uh, as you can see, I have a dual battery system. I'm running two Optima Red Tops, which are controlled by this uh, magnetic latching alternating automatic charging relay uh, from Blue Sea. I have that wired into this Blue Sea fuse panel. Um, and I, can, I have a separate video on how I, how I built all of this stuff and how you can build it yourself at home. This is a relay center for all of my switches in the cab which I will show you. And then just protection, if anything were to short out, this is a uh, 100 amp breaker. So that will go off and protect everything else. So I have one battery designated to all my accessories and one battery designated just for starting the truck. And that's the only thing I've done as far as the engine bay, aside from just a K and an air filter. So I like to keep the Toyota stock. It's a reliable engine and I don't wanna mess around with it. So we'll move a little further back. I'm running rigid uh, pod lights on Rago Fabrication brackets. These are awesome. Uh, they're side shooters and they're great for when you're going up north and you need to see wildlife in the woods. Up top, I've got the Extreme LED dual color. It's an amber and white. You can control them independently. Uh, light bar, which throws a lot of light forward. Yakima Load Warrior basket. And of course, the CVT Mount Shasta tent. It is a two to three person tent and it has served us very well 
it is sitting on top of a KB Voodoo rack, which is mounted um, using the tunnel cover brackets because I wanted to keep a tunnel cover on here. Up north, it's really dusty roads and you never know what the weather's gonna be like. So it's always nice to keep all your stuff dry. And I'll also show you what's, what's under this tunnel cover here in a second. We've got a Rotopax. It's a four gallon fuel tank for auxiliary fuel. I installed these lights. These are camp lights which are downward facing. I've got four of them, one on each corner, and they're really nice when you're setting up camp in the dark. Another light which I installed is this one, and it's on a little dimmer switch. So when you wanna illuminate the back when you're cooking, you can turn it up and turn it down. On the other side of the Voodoo Rack, I have Max Tracks. I've got uh, two of those, which came in handy for our last trip. You can see that video in the description below. I'll, I'll put a link in there uh, when we went up to Jackman and Dennistown. And now we'll look under the tunnel cover. So now we'll just take a quick look at what we built for the back uh, to store all of our camping gear and keep everything organized. So I'm not much of a carpenter, but Ali's dad is actually a professional woodworker. So he helped us design this custom box. Uh, we have two drawers on this side and one big drawer on this side. The reason why we have two smaller drawers on this side is I actually have 10 gallons of onboard water behind it, which I'll be hooking up to a pump and you'll be able to just uh, use quick disconnect fittings on the side here and we'll be able to use it for washing dishes and taking showers, I guess, if it's warm enough. But I'll show you here. This top drawer holds all of our kitchen supplies, all of our utensils, our cookware, some of our food and uh, some fuel. We got some jet boils in here. And this is just kind of like our kitchen drawer. And beneath that is the drawer that we have our stove. And this is actually a, kind of a neat feature. We, ha we had a uh, cutting board. We cut it custom to fit on these little sliders, on these little rails. So when there's no propane bottles in there, the cutting board slides across. And then we have in here our collapsible sink and since the bottom is hollow it can sit down without hitting anything and it goes past the tailgate so when you're all done cooking for the night you slide that cutting board over and you have a way to wash your dishes and you have a place to set them out and let them dry so that's a really really cool feature that we thought of um, that we wanted to integrate into this and then inside of the the extra large drawer you can see back here, I keep tools and supplies. I've got an air compressor, some, some extra oil, some tools, um, redundant controller for the winch in case the come up controller decides to die on me, sleeping bags and fishing gear. And this is where we basically stick all of our, uh, our clothing and whatnot when we go out on trips. So we're really anxious to, to get to use this drawer system. Shout out to Ali's dad for helping me build it. And it looks really nice too in the back. Moving to the inside of the vehicle, in the back here, I have a platform that I built. I did an entire rear seat delete. And in this platform here, we have storage space. So I keep all my recovery gear in the back, tools in the middle, camera gear and charging accessories on that side. And when we're traveling, I have a fridge that sits here and plugs into this 12 volt out outlet. And uh, we put the dog bed on the back because Trooper goes with us. Survive wear, first aid kit. And then we have up top the Blue Ridge Overland gear roof attic. So I'm going to be doing some more here as far as insulating the back because it is a little loud now that there's no seats cushioning that. But uh, that's just another project I have to work on. So we'll head up to the front of the truck. Now up here... First thing you kind of see is this ram mount. I have this, uh, I replaced the bottom bolt with a ball and have a ram mount here for my cell phone with an X grip. That's worked out really well, very handy to have. And here is where I kind of keep all my navigation stuff. I've got the Garmin InReach Mini, which is hooked up to this tablet, which I use Gaia GPS and uh, the Garmin app, which pairs into this. It's worked out really well so far. 
we used it for texting when we were up in Jackman, didn't have service, and it worked really well. It takes a little while to send out a text message, but aside from that, it, uh, it served its purpose. Got some GoPro mounts uh, throughout the truck. Got one there, I've got one there. Uh, so we can get some different angles, some different footage. And then uh, I have up here, these are Miso Custom lights. So it's red and then it has a little switch and it turns bright white, all LEDs. So that's really nice at night. And this is the switch panel that I built and designed. It controls all of my lights on the truck, which is, uh, which is cool. And, and this is the dual battery, uh, switch. So if I want to join the batteries or isolate them, I can do that, do so with this. And just cause I have all these on now, I'll show you, show the lights in the back. So those are the camp lights that surround the rack, which really, they light up the campsite quite well. I had to use, I had to use these L brackets in the back because where the max tracks were located was blocking blocking the lights but i still wanted to have some on this side so i ended up doing that and it's actually going to work out better when we have the tent open and the covers draped over the truck we'll still be able to get some good light there up front we have the rigids which they have covers on them now so they're not as bright and then up top the extreme led x6s dual color light Nothing on the front just yet, but stay tuned. I got some things coming for that. Got a really cool partnership going right now and uh, that I've been working on. So excited to show you guys that. So stay tuned for a little more lighting action. So for communications, aside from the Garmin inReach, I have a Kenwood TM281A, which is a VHF radio. And the antenna for that is up here on mounted to the side of the truck forget where I got this mount, but uh, it's worked out really well. Time to repaint this antenna, but it's uh, it's a great radio. It's it served me well, it's very clear, and it puts out about 50 watts on max. Down below my navigation equipment here, I have a CB radio, which the computer or the mic piece is all in one unit. So you just plug that in and it turns it on. And the antenna for that is on the other side of the truck next to the rigids. I installed some extra USB ports to uh, charge all of our accessories and keep the Garmin charged and the tablet charged. And we'll probably be installing a couple more on that side so that we can charge our phones and things like that. Underneath the steering column, I have the National Luna dual battery monitor and it's showing that one battery is pretty low right now because i haven't really been driving the truck so but uh, that's a that's a great way to monitor your battery status and it's worked out really well for us i figured i would show you the other side where i keep all my camera gear so it's just a padded floor there keep all my accessories gopro mounts chargers and then beneath this i have a 400 watt inverter which plugs into the fridge mount or the fridge fridge plug here. So when we're not using the fridge or if the fridge are, is already at temp, I can just plug that in. And if I need to charge my, my phone or my camera batteries, my GoPro or not. So that is Ajax in a nutshell. That's uh, pretty much everything I've been working on this past winter. It's taken a long time. I'm pretty proud of it. And I'm excited to see where it takes us in the future. The cool places that we get to go and explore and the content we'll get to create and share with you guys. If you made it this far, I really appreciate your support. If you're not a subscriber already, make sure you hit subscribe, leave a comment if you have questions, and give this video a thumbs up. If you're looking for a parts list or a breakdown, links of any of the equipment that I have on the truck, you can find that at PineStateOverland.com. And you can also find a lot more content, photography-based stuff, on my Instagram page, at PSOverland. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.